and Leah at Flytrap Store. Matt's going to show you two today and talk to you about pollinating Venus flytrap flowers. That's right. So we're in, this is Memorial Day weekend, so we're at the end of May here, one day before June, and our plants are about five or six weeks ahead of where they normally are. Uh, it's just been a really warm spring, so uh, you can see most of them here in full flower. Uh, depending on the cultivar, they kind of flower at different times. So you can see down at this end, Kronos and DCXL are pretty far along flowering. And uh, so for example, this is Crimson Sawtooth here and Low Giant. They're usually the last two to flower of the ones that I let go to seed every year. So they're just now starting to open flowers and some of the other ones are really far along. So I was just gonna show you the basic anatomy of a Venus flytrap flower and then how to successfully pollinate one. So let me pick out a decent flower here to look at. Um, let's zoom in on this Kronos flower. Try to get it in the sunshine so you can see it better. So these little bits here on the outside, there's like tentacles with little yellow balls on the end of them. That is the stamen and the pollen is on the tip of those stamens. So that little yellow ball is a pollen sac. In the middle, you have the pistil with the stigma at the end of it. And that's the girl part of the flower. And that's where you need to take the pollen from too. But this stigma isn't receptive. So as the flower matures, this will happen over the course of a couple of days. So right when they open, it's usually when they have the most pollen, the stigma won't be receptive for at least a day or two. And then once it is, it'll look like this. And that's when it's ready to receive pollen. So back and show the other one. So that's this is not... a closed stigma. Okay. Not receptive to pollen yet. All right. This one is open. You can see how fuzzy and, and uh, yellow, wide yellow tip it is. A good one to look at for if you really want to see what a receptive stigma is fused to. It gets really wide stigmas on it. So you can see how fuzzy and wide the stigma is on these guys. And here's one that's closed still. So you can see the pollen here on fused tooth. And I'll just self-pollinate a couple of these flowers real quick, and that'll be the end of the tutorial. So it's going to be a short one, but I got a little brush here. It's not ideal, but it'll work. So you can use a Q-tip. Uh, it's better to use like a natural fiber paintbrush, a little paintbrush. Um, anything that'll collect the pollen so that you can keep it on the, on the brush or the Q-tip and then touch it to the receptive stigma will work. So let's do this flower on fused tooth here. Bring it over so Leah can get close to it. So this flower opened most recently. You can see the stigma is not receptive yet. And usually that's the ones you go for for the pollen. So you transfer just a bit of that pollen onto the tip of the, the brush. You can see it coming off there, flowing. And I like to use a dark bristle brush usually, but this is all we had lying around. But you should be able to see some pollen on the tip of that uh, white bristle brush. It's kind of yellowish. It sticks to it and stains it a little bit. I can see it. I hope it comes across in the video. And then you just transfer it to the top of the the top of the receptive stigma. So I'll pick up a little more here and get it on there. And that's pretty much it. And now these flowers should go to seed. So this oh, it takes about 3 weeks, I think. Typically what happens is after it's pollinated, the petals will curl in and then the ovaries on the flowers will start swelling up. I don't have any that are at that stage quite yet, but it'll turn black and then you'll know whether or not pollination was successful because it'll either, either swell up and then go to seed, which will be three weeks later, and we'll do another video when that starts happening. Hopefully we're not in the middle of our move at that point, but um, yeah, it'll swell up and then crack open and you'll see little tiny black seeds in there so they're shiny like little pieces of blackberry yeah they almost they're look fun. like poppy seeds they're super small about a millimeter yeah. in length and yeah little blackberry they're fun to find poppy seeds yeah well i have a question well would you want your plant to flower if you weren't going to be trying to collect seed no ideally if you're not planning on doing any pollination or, or collecting of seed you snip the flower stalk off when it's about an inch or two tall. You can actually use it to propagate with, if you stick it down in the pot and keep it fairly damp or just put it in a separate pot and keep it fairly damp. It works better in lump or sphagnum, but you'll often get plants from the, the little the little flower stalk. Mm -hmm. um, if you let it flower, it takes a huge toll on the plant, it usually sets them back about six weeks. So we let most of my mother plants go to seed every year. So. 
they're yeah, older and I larger. Try to keep really good care of them and then let them go to seed and then they set back real bad for the rest of the early summer but the, usually by fall they'll start looking okay again. Okay that's all? That's it. Thank you Matt. <laughs> Bye everyone. See you guys.